Hi guys, it has actually turned out to be a beautiful day here in the end times in paradise out here in this gator hole outside of Cedar Key, Florida. Still a little chilly, but turning nice again on this lovely Friday, now noon, January 19th, 2018. So it being Friday, I am in the middle of my uh, weekly two-part ecological meltdown roundup rant where I simply go on my email box to see how this planet is heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. In part one, I went through Manga Bay's roundup of all the eco-catastrophes rolling out everywhere. So now we're going to go over to the Washington Post and right now to the Center for Biological Diversity's Endangered Earth Roundup of Disaster. But where they actually, the center actually has pulled out an electron microscope and a team of bloodhounds to find a tiny sliver of good news here in the Trumpo scene as we see a victory for beavers and other wildlife in Oregon chalk up a win. In response to legal action by the center and its allies, the Trump administration's wildlife killing program known as Wildlife Services has agreed to stop killing Oregon's beavers, river otters, muskrats, and mink. In 2016, Wildlife Services killed 400 beavers. There you go. But at least for now, the beavers are safe with Donald Trump. Well, depending on which species of beaver we're talking about, quoting this beaver hugger. We will keep the pressure on wildlife services to make sure beavers are protected, not persecuted. But what's good for beavers, not so good for the Canada lynx population here on this side of the Canada border at least, as Trump decides to strip protection for the Canada lynx. No shit, Sherlock. Trump's U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service just announced plans to strip endangered species protection from Canada lynx, claiming they have recovered. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Despite all the ongoing threats to the cats, especially from climate change. Uh, there you go. Quoting the center's Andrea Santasire, the lynx is the latest victim of the Trump administration's ruthless disregard for rare and vanishing wildlife. No shit, Sherlock. The science does not support this sad and shocking move, with lynx fake it facing climate change, continued trapping, you know, for their fur, and habitat lost to logging. There is no way protections for this beautiful cat should be removed. But, uh, thank you, Donald Trump, for sending the Canada lynx into oblivion. From Canada lynx going into Bolivian, oblivion to whales, this is their latest update about these goddamn crab traps uh, entangling all these whales as uh, hunting, good God, no one knows how many whales are dying for your right to be a clueless fucking moron consumer to stuff crab legs into your fat, clueless face. Next time you eat crab, I want you to think about this story. Thousands of vertical fishing lines off the west coast create a dangerous labyrinth that whales must navigate to complete their migrations. These lines get caught on 
quail tails and flukes leading to cuts, infection, and death by starvation or drowning. And the problem has worsened in recent years. No shit, Sherlock. Okay. Uh, what's next? How about the human face of climate change? The human face of climate change. Communicating truths about climate change can be difficult. One way to do it more effectively is by showing that climate change is affecting us now and also showing how. So they're sending you over to their uh, video on their sidebar video channel called The Revelator. Okay. We just heard about Canada Lynx heading into oblivion. Let's go over to Southern California to look at the mountain lions. Suit filed to save Southern California mountain lions. The center and allies have sued the city of Temecula, Temecula, California for approving a housing development that could doom local mountain lions by cutting off their access to a critical wildlife corridor that allows them to travel um, between mountains. The Santa Ana population of mountain lions is already very small. About 20 individuals left. And they are already suffering from lack of genetic diversity due to existing restrictions on their movements. Sounds a lot like the mythical Florida panther. Here is a new march. A women's march, I guess, to save the planet. Anyway, moving on. What is going on with Cliven Bundy, that fucker? Uh, celebrating this week being absolved, acquitted of all charges against him. Uh, and so his cows are still just running around. There you go. Uh, that it's uh, um, apparently. That's it. I guess his cows will just keep right on grazing on public lands, including inside the Gold Butte National Monument, uh, from which he was ordered to remove his cows five years ago. Uh, he's just been grazing his cows now inside a national monument without paying one penny for it, as all these clueless fucking uh, right-wing conspiracy wackos cheering him on. There you go. Tell the Air Force don't bomb bighorn sheep. Air Force don't bomb bighorn sheep. Are you listening to me, Air Force? I'm telling you, do not bomb bighorn sheep. I remember reading in a doomsday sermon, Terry Tempest Williams, 20 years ago, if not longer, uh, talking about this very thing, about uh, the bighorn sheep being bombed, encompassing 1.6 million acres of pristine Mojave Desert, Nevada's Desert National Wildlife Refuge was designated in 1936 by FDR to protect the largest herd of desert bighorn sheep in the southwestern U.S. And now, of course, the U.S. Air Force is eyeing the refuge to use for military training and bomb testing. 
this land grab would destroy bighorn sheep habitat and forever take these public lands out of public hands. No shit, Sherlock. Yes, let's start bombing the bighorn sheep. Terry Tempest Williams was talking about this in Utah, and so they've been bombing them there. I guess maybe they've already bombed all the sheep in Utah, so they need some more sheep to bomb, and they figure it could be a, no better time in American history than the Trumpo scene to start bombing bighorn sheep in Nevada. Okay, anyway, let's move over to those eco-Nazis at the Washington Post. What is going on on the minds of energy and environment editor Chris Mooney uh, this week? I will be uh, talking about this uh, more on Wednesday. Many versions of this story all over the mainstream media. The planet just had its hottest four years in recorded history as Trump is dismantling efforts to fight climate change. So while 2017 was not number one, 2017, 16, 15, and 14 were the f hottest four. Uh, if you just look at the, if you're looking for the hottest four years in history, you don't need to look very far. And here I'm going to talk about this one more uh, on Wednesday too. This hilarious new study that says, yes, global warming will be bad, but these scientists say it will not reach the worst case scenario. Level, Climate change won't get as bad as we dread, a new study finds. But we're not going to get off easy either. No shit, Sherlock. And again, I will, uh, I don't know whether to talk about that story in my clueless moron roundup rant or my climate change meltdown roundup rant. That hilarious story. Several Alert Tribes members have sent me this. Of course, Andy has already commented on the, uh, the horse shittedness uh, uh, of this story. But anyway, we'll come back to that in a couple of days. Uh, Okay, I just mentioned this in part one of this roundup, uh, Bear is repeating, nearly all members of the National Park Service Advisory Panel resign in frustration. Nine of the 12 board members uh, resigned in protest saying Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke refused to meet with them or convene one single board meeting since taking office one year ago. And this uh, resignation comes amid well-founded rumors that with no input from the Citizens Advisory Committee, it sounds like that Ryan Zinke under Donald Trump is thinking about charging $70 to drive your car into uh, the big national parks starting next summer. $70. Right now, I think it's $25, uh, which gives you a week in the park. They're talking about $70 every time you cross the border. Right now, it's $80 for a national pass to all of the national parks. Uh, I don't know what they're thinking of taking that $80 to for an annual pass to all the parks. But uh, those Agenda 21 
wackos might know what they're talking about. Okay, we also mentioned this. And uh, as... Uh, as Washington Post sounding more and more like Manga Bay, uh, talking about the Saiga antelopes, uh, the Saiga antelopes over there in Asia, just going the way of uh, the dodo bird. Kiss the Saiga antelope goodbye. And let's just wrap up here because I see that I am running late to meet one of my tribe's members. So we just have to wrap up part two. Right here, 17 former wildlife officials urge the Department of Interior to rethink easing rules against killing birds. Jesus. Under the new interpretation a company, otherwise known as a planet-eating global corporation, would be in violation of federal law only when it is, quote, engaged in an activity the object of which was to render an animal subject to human control. This is some of this uh, 1984 gobbledygook doublespeak. Uh, this is called, uh, what we call it in a real estate contract, a buffalo clause. A buffalo clause is a clause uh, and just buried in, a, in, in, this, in this little legalese jargon that uh, real estate agents you know, right, usually for buyers, so they can escape their promises to perform on the contract. This is a buffalo clause uh, buried in this uh, little piece of legislation, the bottom line of which uh, gives these global and the fucking corporations who are moving into our public lands pretty much just carte blanche to kill all the fucking birds they want to and just claim it was an accident that we did not mean to kill them. So just because we did kill them, we're not breaking the law. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. I anyway, guys, I could go on with this. Uh, but as I say, I'm running late. So I'm going to wrap up part two of this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant. Smoke them if you got them, guys. We are so fucked. Bye, guys. <laughs>